Who goes there? That nightmare again. I need a drink. No. I want to know what Bradley and Dr. Colden have to say about all this. You're awake, Mr. Pierce. How do you feel? <sighs> Did I sleep long? The day is only starting. It's fine. How's our fugitive? Dr. Fuller hasn't reported your disappearance to the Force, but that'll come soon. Bradley? Who else would it be? Mr. Pierce, are you alright? You look like you saw a ghost. I... Th there are things I, I can't explain. Tell us. What happened? I found a file bearing Sarah Hawkins' name in the Institute's basement. It makes sense. A powerful family like the Hawkins had the means to hide such a disgrace. But everyone knows the Fullers have been taking care of the Hawkins for at least a generation. And all were aware of Mrs. Hawkins' fragility. Perhaps, but no one would allow a psychiatric internment. From what I read in the file, Fuller used her as a subject of his experiments. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins, subjects of Dr. Fuller. Why those two? Given the energy he pours into Riverside, I presume it was Fuller's creation. His father's, to be correct. He was a surgeon on board the Scylla. He founded the hospital in 1904 with funds from the Hawkins family before he died and his son Thomas Fuller took over. Two families inextricably linked. Most island families are that way. Captain Fitzroy's father was also a seaman aboard the Scylla. Powerful families dominating everything. Yes, and as you could tell, Dr. Fuller is- He wouldn't be happy if he knew we were snooping. I know the risks. I don't fear him. Do you wish to know anything else? Dr. Fuller seems to be leaving a trail of corpses. Not to mention those strange machines, chains, and tools of all kind. Yes. I've been telling you that Fuller uses his patients as... guinea pigs. What I saw was more akin to torture than medicine. Do you even hear what you're saying? Dr. Fuller is highly... It's the truth, Ethan. And I'll... I'm listening, Mr. Pierce. How could you survive such a wound? What wound are you talking about? That blow Charles Hawkins inflicted on you. I thought you were dead. Wow. You really got hit hard on the head, Pierce. Don't tell me you don't remember. For crying out loud, no! Can't you tell I'm as healthy as a horse? As for you, though. You had a serious head trauma. It's 
possible you may have hallucinated. I know what I saw. Anything else you wanted to say? Seems you two know each other pretty well. It's a tiny island. Everyone knows everyone. Especially since I'm a police officer and Marie's a doctor. The chemistry is obvious. I do seem a little bit stupid, don't I? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the business at hand. What I'm sure of now is that the Hawk... And what brings you to that conclusion? The fact that Charles Hawkins survived... I don't understand. Mr. Hawkins was buried. That's what he would have you believe. Like you believe you saw me die. You were there, Bradley. You... I'd remember that. Why would he fake his own death? Do you think he covered up his... That's possible. Seems hard to swallow. Don't you have anything more concrete, Pierce? Bradley, what do you remember? I don't understand your question. The night we went into the Hawkins mansion, you don't seem to remember the tunnels and what occurred there. Uh, no memory of going down any tunnel. No, we were in the manor, then... Uh... Then what? I... Uh... The rest is quite blurry. I don't recall how I came back home. And then? I went to visit you at the hospital and called on Marie's help to get you released. And you don't remember the events of the tunnel? I mean, that was where you died. I don't. Let's talk about something else. I have flashbacks. They haunt me. What did they do to you? There was that doctor, Fuller. My legs, the pain, I, I couldn't bear it. I was screaming. They injected me with something. I woke up at the Institute. Bradley was there. And how you scared us. You seemed demented. You likely woke up during the anesthesia. No wonder those memories haunt you. What in God's name were they doing to you? What happened afterwards? When I woke up the second time, I was in a padded cell. That's where you found me, Doctor. After you released me, I got a good look at what's in store for the patients at the Riverside Institute. Hallucinogenic gas pumped into the cells. An infernal machine. Horrific medical experiments. Impossible. Dr. Fuller would never do such a thing. You should believe it, Ethan. What Mr. Pierce saw is precisely what I've been trying to prove. Did you discover anything else? I, I met a Francis Sanders. Do you know him? Of course. He's a patient. Or was. I haven't seen him since Dr. Fuller had him transferred to the basement. He knew Sarah Hawkins. And that's what killed him. What? How did he die? I'm not sure I can explain it. Tell me how Mr. Sanders died. I didn't see what, but something was there with us. Of what do you speak? Sanders said it was Sarah Hawkins' visitor. He spoke of it like... Sarah Hawkins? Have I missed something? This makes no sense. You really think she's involved? Francis Sanders mentioned Mrs. Hawkins just before dying. You know, Francis Sanders was a well-known art collector. I guess you can still pay a visit to his wife, Irene Sanders. An art collector, you say? That's probably how they met. If you plan on having dinner at the Sanders household, please spare the widow the tale of her late husband's suffering. I don't agree. She deserves the truth. But that truth may be biased. We don't know the bottom of it.
You're right. Without a plausible explanation for what I saw, let's not jump to conclusions. That seems wise indeed. Very well. I'll go to see Francis's widow. Perhaps I'll find a link between her husband's death and Sarah Hawkins. Don't end up in the hospital this time. <laughs> I'll do my best. Let us go now and learn the truth about what's happening on this island. The other night's events are still confused in my head. What can I do for you, sir? Mrs. Sanders, I'm a private detective. We must talk about your husband and his ties to Sarah Hawkins. Can I come in? You may. However, before we go any further, please know that my husband died yesterday. That is precisely what brings me here. Well, well, look who's here. You know each other. We met briefly. Time enough to iron out a few matters. The brave detective has a talent for sticking his nose into my business. I bump into her every time I'm investigating someone's death. It's a small island, detective. My island. It's better that it's you bumping into me. You're investigating Francis' death. Why? Who hired you? I spoke to Francis before he died. His story suggests a link to a case I'm working on. Well, since this business has got nothing to do with me, I'll be in your husband's office, Irene. We'll carry on later. Very well, Miss Baker. This way, Mr. Pierce. And do make yourself comfortable. It would seem that you have much to tell me.
May I inquire as to when you had the opportunity to talk to my husband? Yesterday. I met him at the hospital. He spoke to me about Sarah Hawkins. Oh, of course he spoke to you about her. That's all he talked about. Sarah Hawkins and her paintings. Please forgive my tone. The fact is that I have not been allowed to see him since he was interned. You, on the other hand, a perfect stranger. We're able to... How was he? Were you present when he had this attack? What happened? He started raving, screaming that a dimensional shambler had found him. Oh, mercy, that story again. Why have him interned? That was when he began to convulse and twist with pain. Or terror, it's hard to tell. Uh, I beg your pardon? I'm not really sure of what I saw, or what I didn't see. But it's best that you weren't there. I should have been there. What you're telling me is outrageous. I need to understand. How, how could this happen? In a reputed institute? And, and right before your eyes? Did you not do anything to help him? It's terrible what happened to your husband, but I had nothing to do with it. I was injured, and I came across him in the hospital quite by chance. Injured? Well, I'm delighted to see you in such fine fettle, Detective. Not everybody enjoyed such a prompt recovery. I suppose Fuller does do miracles now and again. Luck is obviously very kind to you. Oh, I'm tired, Mr. Pierce. I would be grateful if you could tell me what you expect of me, and then leave. How did you come to meet Sarah Hawkins? We were the wealthiest and most influential families on Darkwater. Of course we would know each other. And when Charles returned from Europe with his sweet little artist, she and her sinister paintings were destined to catch my husband's eye. He bought many of her works over the last five years. They adorn his macabre gallery. Did your husband talk to you about Sarah Hawkins' visitor? A shambler, to use his precise terms. <laughs> well, you can't imagine that's all he talked about. It's exhibited at the center of the gallery. No better place for the painting that endowed him with the privilege of such a shameful and miserable end to his life. Hold on. The shambler is a painting by Sarah Hawkins. Who else to paint such horrors? Take a look for yourself, if you feel so inclined. It is my only lead at this stage. I suppose I have nothing to lose. Then you have paid no heed. For my part, I refuse to set foot in that gallery again. But if you are so eager to see it... Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. I won't be long. Did she really care for him, after all? The day the Shambler came into the Sanders' lives. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. Friends, even? Sanders' accession register. He wrote beside the Shambler. Finally. What did Sarah Hawkins fear so much that she didn't want to sell the painting? He finally won. Was Sanders aware of his imminent doom? A 
house of artists. A house of artists. A house of artists. She first refused to sell the painting. How did that make her feel? Was she jealous of Sarah Hawkins? Let's see what this cylinder has to say once it's inserted in a phonograph. A strange Amerindian pendant. I could use one of those. Strange. For months, Sarah Hawkins refused to part with her painting, to finally give it away for nothing. An old diary. That's twice you've stepped on my toes, Detective. Try not to make a habit of it. I've got a lot of bad habits. Some can be more fatal than others. What have you come looking for in this gallery? I'm not here to cause trouble, if that's what's worrying you. Worry me? Don't over. If the last beating wasn't enough for you, 
but as long as you keep out of my way. And you? What- I'm here on business. Irene asked me to liquidate all these paint. She doesn't intend to hang around here for long. Why you? Believe it or not, there aren't many collectors on Darkwater. A choice that comes down to Fitzroy and me. And I- Not now, sweetheart. I'd like to read this without some snoop looking over my shoulder. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. The public entrance to the gallery. The public entrance to the gallery. The man transforms an entire wing of his manor into an art gallery. What the hell was that? Thank you. 
must get rid of it. What the hell was that? Touch it. What the hell was that? <laughs> that thing came out of this painting. There has to be a link. Maybe if I destroy it. What the hell was that? <laughs> that thing. There has to be a link. Maybe if I destroy it. <laughs> that thing came out of this painting. There Is this dagger part of Sanders' collection, or was he seeking to acquire? Damn. I could try tearing the painting with this thing. What the hell was that? Damn, maybe I can use this dagger.
What the hell was that? What the hell was that? What the hell was that? That maybe I can use this dagger. What the hell was that? Doubt maybe I can use this dagger. Use a specific dagger. What the hell was that?
Maybe I can use this dagger. 